Okay, so um, this is the publisher file that I've created earlier as, a, as an example of a logo. I'm just going to show you a little bit about how I made that. Um, now, you can see when I hover over these things, I've used various shapes. And those shapes themselves have got um, things done to them. They've got color in them, and they're aligned in certain ways. I'm just going to flick to an empty page. I've got two pages in this document. I'll just show you very quickly how I did a few of those things. So, shapes menu will give you certain shapes. So, circles, if I wanted to make a circle and keep it completely round, I just hold, hold down shift while I drag. And now, as standard, it comes out with a particular kind of fill and stuff in it. But um, if we're assuming we weren't on that. We'll go back to where we were, home menu. I can select something by clicking on it. And then I get this format option up here. Now, form option, uh, if it's not highlighted, you just click on it. And you get all the things you can do with this particular thing. So in my shape, very simply, if I wanted to change the color, I could just choose a different color. If I wanted to put a line around it, I can change the line color. I can change the line weight but to make it thicker and so on. If I wanted to actually make um, a gradient fill instead, I could come down here where it says gradient. At the very bottom, just off the screen, there's one that says more gradients. That opens up this little box for me. Now I can choose what I want to do myself. So for instance, if I wanted to have a gradient with a couple of different colors in it, I could um, click on the first color, pick a color, go for a green color, click on the second one, come over here, pick a different color, go for a kind of burgundy kind of color. So now that's going to give me a gradient across these um, color ranges. And I'm going for a particular type. So I could have here, there's different sorts. And I've got various options here of which direction it goes in. So if I want to go from um, left to right um, with my gradient, mine's just off the screen for you, but I'll click on that one to, um, to select it, then click OK. And that puts that gradient in there for me. At any point, I can go back and I can edit that in exactly the same way. If I had a second shape, and insert another shape, something completely different, go for a rounded rectangle shape. Okay, fills the same as it did last time, I'll do the same thing, I'll give it a different colour fill, maybe just make it yellow for now. Now if I drag this, you can see that first of all I get some little pink arrows that tell me when it's in the centre, so I can help to kind of line it up myself, there's a line up um, that way, and it's in front. If I wanted that to go behind, I've got options here where I can send it backwards, okay, now if I've got lots of them I can decide which one I want to go to the very back and which one to go to the very front and so on by clicking on that formatting selection in there. So that's a few things that I did with that. And I'm obviously making sure that I align things nicely. So when you select, you've got the option of aligning things as well. If you have more than one object, so at the moment I've only got, I've got two objects there. If I shift click, so I've got both of them selected, this time I can align, I can say align around the middle and so on, and it will line things up for me, make them um, look nicer. I've got the option of putting text in. So I didn't use Word, I just used a text box. And I drew myself some text, and I put in there my um, FM bit of text there, very small. I'll bring it up to size by clicking up here. And as you probably saw on mine, one thing you can do is you can have one part of the text one size and another part another size. You can even highlight all and change and have different fonts. So certain fonts will look better than others. That's maybe a nicer font. You need to think carefully about the kind of colors you want to use and the positioning of things where you put them. Something else that I did was I played around with photographs. So uh, you can get an image off of the internet to do with Brisbane. Now the one I did, I'm just going to insert it in here so you can see. So there's my picture of the bridge. I brought that picture in. And one thing I did with it, again, you can see if I click on it, I get different options. Under my format option for this picture, I've got something over here called crop. Now normal crop, you can just do to make things bigger and smaller, and as soon as you clicked on them and click off them, it's done the crop. Okay, if I didn't want to crop it that way, what I could do, I can put that crop back where it was to start with, but I can actually do crop to a shape. If I click on crop to a shape, uh, it's just off the screen, for, on, fortunately here, you can see the, the edge of them. If I wanted to do a shape like I did before, um, I will just choose, in fact I'll do a heart shape, you can't quite see it, but there it is. I click off it, that's now put that shape into a particular cropped image and in exactly the same way you can format that and you can put borders on it and so on to make it look um, nicer. And then again you can position those in different ways to actually make them uh, work the way you want them to. One other thing just uh, worth mentioning is you can create what's called guides. So if you want to line things up you can drag out your own guides. So if I wanted to know that the top of my 
part was there. I could bring out my guideline. I could drag one out from this side to the edge. Okay, and you see I get these green lines. I'll zoom in a bit so you can see a bit clearer. Get these lines that come in, and those lines then will help you to line stuff up if you want to make it really accurate. Um, after I finished making up my logo, I saved it. So I'll save this one now. But what I could do is I could do File, Save As, and this time I choose PDF. So I now get a PDF version. I don't want to save over my original one, so I'll put two on the end of there. Hit Save, and that will actually create for me. It's gone massive. I'll make it a bit smaller so you can see it. That's created now my PDF version of my document, complete with my name. And basically, you're submitting the PDF and the publisher version to your teacher. The PDF version is much easier for them to look at and open to see what it looks like visually. But the publisher version allows them to open and see exactly what you've done with your design, how you've made it. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a few ideas. By all means, you can use things that I haven't shown you. There's lots of other features in Publisher. It's a fantastic piece of software. And if you want to add any other things into them to actually create your logo, then go for it. Okay, good luck.